Howdy folks, it's AJ the Hunting Gear Guy. This is a Valmet M78 LMG. Uh, this is a non-restricted firearm here in Canada. It's a semi-automatic. They're offered in 762 by 39 223 and uh, this one's in 308 So a wide variety of cartridge choices, and uh, they're somewhat unique as being the only um, non-restricted AK you can get in Canada. Most of these were prohibited, um, but these ones were not for... Ah, there's some various uh, uh, theories I've heard, but um, I won't delve into too many of those. Uh, but uh, in, in any case, it is a uh, just a standard AK-style uh, rifle. Uh, we've got our standard safety switch on the side here, and it doesn't have a spot for full auto. Again, this is just a civilian export version from Finland uh, that uh, fires 308. So there's no bolt hold open, so I can see that there's nothing in the uh, chamber, and my magazine, of course, is empty. So why don't we take a closer look at this thing? Now, just starting at the muzzle, we have this very unique flash hider brake on here. It's actually meant to break barbed wire. So you would take barbed wire and kind of ram your right, ram it in there and fire a round off and that would break the barbed wire. Um, interesting, interesting. I don't know how much, you know, that's going to matter for civilian shooters, probably not at all. Uh, we've got a bayonet uh, mount at the bottom there. And then we get into this uh, bipod here. Now the bipod is held on by these little clamps down here. And all you got to do is pinch and pull down and then that bipod is loose. And you can see that there's actually a couple different spots you can put it. So you can lock it right there, pinch, pull it in, and then you can lock it right there. And that's as far as it'll go. So two different options on where you can kind of lock that thing forward. I guess you could put it back here somewhere as well. Um, but a couple of different options on, on where you can put that bipod. Uh, the feet on the bipod. I wonder if my camera will focus on that. Or just like a stamp steel with a little dagger's edge on it there as well. Come on, focus, you fucker. There we go. So we can see there, it's just a flat piece with a little pointy bit towards the middle. Now our fore end is a round, kind of triangular, so it's a bit fatter on the bottom there, and it kind of skinnies up towards the top. Uh, really nice to hold. Uh, our rear sight is a sliding style that moves up and down, nice and smooth, very nice and uh, very sharp in there. Uh, at the rear here, we have a three dot sight. I'll show you that in a minute. And because this rear sight is on the gas tube, we have a retainer here that can pull the whole shebang off. So that's what that's there for. We've got our charging handle on the left hand side. So pulling that back, you can see inside and it does not lock the action to the rear like all AKs do. There's our safety. So right now the safety is off, popping that up there. Not only puts the safety on, so the trigger is dead, but also will stop you from chambering around. So uh, interesting bit there, flip it off. And then our gun is live. You saw that that chamber's empty and the magazine's empty. So let's test out that trigger. So we got some take up there. There's the sear and it's a fairly heavy trigger, but to be expected. Uh, the magazine release to the rear here has a little bit of texturing just on this side. So you can push that in and rock and lock the magazine out. So the magazine has a little thing there and she goes in. And if you're wondering how many rounds we fit in that mag massive magazine, well, this is Canada, so uh, it's supposed to be five. This one actually only holds four. Coming up further forward, we have a grip so we can take disassemble it there, there's our grip. And then we come on to kind of an RPD style uh, buttstock, but it's not an RPD. All right, now that we're back from the range, um, how was it to shoot? Um, pretty good. I mean, it's a gas operated 308, so it's never gonna be like a ton of recoil on it. Uh, it's got a bit, it's got a bit of stank to it. And 
Uh, maybe if I was on the grass where I could really dig these bipods in and load them up, uh, that'd be a little bit better off a bench or something like that. They just skitter around. There's not really a lot of preloading you can do on it. Um, but uh, it was okay. I found that uh, getting mags in and out was fine. I think, I wonder if this is made for righties because uh, if you see that magazine release, you can see it kind of sticks out a little bit more on the right-handed side rather than the left. But I found for myself, maybe you're supposed to get the thumb on this side. I don't know. I'm not sure what, what, what's going on there. But uh, it's fairly easy to shoot, um, fairly accurate as well. And uh, cycling was 100% with me, uh, just firing some Nork surplus uh, 147 grain stuff. So should you buy a Valmet M78? I think it, like if you want to get one of these things, it's because you want the collector's value or you want something that's very unique here in the Canadian market. Uh, prices on these things is quite high, <laughs> right around five to ten thousand dollars, depending on where you get them and how good of a deal you get and what kind of condition they're in as well. Because uh, these things haven't been made for a very long time. Uh, there's only so many in country and. Uh, they're not making them anymore, so you're not going to uh, uh, to get very. Uh, uh, you're not going to be able to buy one of these things new. We'll say that. Um, so if you want something really cool that's got that collector value um, that uh, none of your other friends will uh, will have, check out the Valmet M78. Thanks for watching.